ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm David Marsland and this is The Leader Weekends. Every Saturday we bring you a bonus episode of our business podcast, How to Be a CEO. This is a cut down version, so hit the link in the show notes to hear the full thing or search your podcast provider for How to Be a CEO. There are new episodes every Monday morning. Get a cup of tea, have a biscuit, come up with a brilliant business idea. That's how lots of entrepreneurs went from the kitchen table to multi-million pound success. Or at least, they say that's how it happened. But it's not how Biscuiteers started. There, the plan came first. The ambition of the business was to create a whole new sector in gifting. I was really doing research into flowers, chocolates... You know, those are the those are where we see our competitive set. Harriet Hastings is the co-founder and MD of the company that began taking orders for its luxury biscuit gifts online in 2007. Now it's employing 180 people and just opened up a new US-based service. She's achieved that day one ambition, but it has not been easy. Running a business, particularly as it gets bigger, as I've discovered, you know, it becomes a great deal more stressful than it is at the beginning. The beginning bit, I think, is the fun bit. The more the, the business scales up, the greater the responsibility. I'm David Marsden from the Evening Standard. Harriet will be appearing at our SME Expo, which is being held at XL London on April 25th and 26th. To find out more and get free tickets, go to smexpo.co.uk. She's going to be on a panel talking about managing increasing costs in business, which we'll also touch on in this show. But let's start with where she's talking to us from. The Biscuiteers HQ in London's Collier's Wood. They call it the Ministry of Biscuits. That's a great name for an office. There is a... I suppose Willy Wonka is uh, probably the most appropriate uh, version, uh, aspect to what we do. You know, it's a mad business, really. Uh, We are hand icing at the moment um, three million biscuits a year here and building capacity to to take that to six million biscuits. So we've taken the concept of really an artisanal business and really trying to work out how to deliver that at scale. How many biscuits did you do in your first year? Let's compare that to the six million. I obviously don't know, but I would have thought the answer to that is, you know, a few thousands. You know, it took us quite a long time to get here. I mean, the interest was there right from the very beginning because we had the good fortune to be in one of those businesses which was first to market with an idea. Obviously, that meant that there was a lot of interest in what we were doing. We had we were adopted very quickly, uh, particularly I think by uh, by the sort of fashion media and indeed and indeed fashion companies as well who wanted to buy from us. Those were our very first biscuits that we were known for. We were doing sort of handbags and shoes and those kind of things. And and, and that got us a lot of profile quite quickly. Yeah, and I, I may be wrong here, so do, do correct me if I am, but I think the idea came first, didn't it? Because you're not a baker by trade, Harriet. No, I'm a marketeer. <laughs> that's what I am <laughs> by trade, and that's what my uh, career has been in. And it was literally that combination of the fact that my husband was in, if you like, the food space, the commercial food space, and I saw that there was an opportunity for food gifting. And I also saw there was an opportunity for sort of corporate branded gifting as well. So it was yeah. those two ideas that kind of came together and also thought it wasn't being done very well. I think that's probably, you know, in terms of that sort of solving a problem. I thought there was a lot of market and not a, and not a great deal of choice. But it's one thing having the idea and it's another to go ahead with it isn't it? It's that, was that a scary moment for you? Was that daunting? What were you thinking? Um, I, I think it wasn't as scary perhaps it should have been. I think I'm typical of a uh, particular kind of entrepreneurs who, so I, in other words, I had left my full-time job because I had four children and I was finding that daunting at that point. And so I was, I, I wasn't completely not working, but I was sort of working as a consultant really. And I think I just, because I wasn't doing anything else, wasn't doing a big job at the time. It it felt more like an opportunity. Do you know what I mean? It felt like I had less to lose than I perhaps might have done at a different stage in my life. But what I knew I wanted was a lot more kind of agency and control over my own time. Were there ever any points when you thought we're expanding too fast or even the opposite? We need to go faster. Um, If anything, I think that what I've learned is we should have gone faster, quicker. Oh, really? Yeah. And I, I think it's partly because we didn't take any investment in the business for a very long time. And in retrospect, and I think probably because we valued all of the control in the business and running it, and I think that it limited a little bit, you know, the kind of speed and acceleration, which I now see. So I do slightly regret that. So are you moving and making decisions much faster now? Is that what you learn from them? Because you've, you've opened the site in the US now, you're starting to expand internationally. Was that a quick decision for you? I think it's a, 
I mean, what I believe about the business is that, you know, Biscuiteers is a very unique concept in the market. And it's still a very unique concept in the market and gifting market. The ambition of the business was to create a whole new sector in gifting. So <clears> we started, when you say what research was I doing, I was really doing research into flowers, chocolates. You know, those are, the, those are where we see our competitive set. So anywhere that you might spend your money on the kind of things that we're selling gifts for, you know, we're an occasional-led all year round gifting business is essentially what we are. The other thing that's interesting about it, it's not only unique in the UK, as far as we've been able to see, it's pretty unique around the world. The opportunity is obviously there. And the way that we're approaching it is uh, the US was our biggest market. So it was the obvious thing was to, to have a sort of US facing site, which is very new for us, um, because we already organically had got quite a few customers in the US. So there was sort of natural affinity. Also, we have two icing cafes in London. It's quite interesting. It kind of helps you to see where there is a lot of kind of really intense sort of enthusiasm for what we're doing. As an online retailer, which you were, those physical sites have made quite a big difference to you then. They've, they've worked as marketing vehicles, I suppose. That was always the intention. So we're the absolute opposite, I suppose, from a company that was, if you like, traditionally high street retail and put up a website. We're an e-commerce company who saw that having a bricks and mortar site would add value in terms of brand and marketing in a way that because it is challenging, I think, to be pure online, you know, and, and so I, the way I see the shops, I see them as 365 days piece of out, out of home advertising. Obviously, I'm now going to have a biscuit. Maybe you should too. While you do that, have a listen to some adverts. How important have partnerships been with you in terms of accelerating the growth of Biscuiteers? When you say partnerships, we, there's different bits. We have a, what we call corporate sales. So we sell, and that's quite a big part of our business. So we sell directly to corporates um, and that would be designs of bespoke designs. So they could be fashion designs, they could be logos, they could be anything really. But I think that is, is, is both a legitimate business uh, model, but also there is no question that being associated with luxury brands, you know, absolutely it's a world beating luxury brands, obviously is a great way to kind of enhance your own brand. What we also do is we also have always done a lot of partnerships with other, usually with British brands like ours. So people with whom we feel that Biscuiteers has a natural affinity where there is likely to be a crossover um, of customer base. We would consider that part of our marketing. Every month we will be doing sort of tie-ups and then we also do product tie-ups. So for instance, uh, we did one last year and we will this year, we have a partnership with Emma Bridgewater for Mother's Day. We will do Emma Bridgewater designs as biscuits. We had a partnership with Sophie Conran at Christmas where we were doing an advent calendar together. So sometimes it goes further, it can go into product and sometimes it's pure marketing partnerships. Who goes to who first then? Do you go out and go, we're doing this and it's going to work for your business? Or did you find people going... Could you do something for us? We've got this idea. What, what comes first? I think it started with people approaching us. And I think then now, because we do more of it and it's, and it's a more sort of, if you like, for, formal approach to how we do it, we sometimes approach other brands and say, would you like to work with us? I think the most important thing is that there is a sort of like, nice crossover of audience and, and, and it feels like it's a good fit. Mm. We work with a lot of other sort of entrepreneur-led brands as well for the same reason. I also think at a sort of broader level, SMEs supporting each other is a really good thing. It's a really, <laughs> it's a really effective way to do marketing without just spending it in a kind of paid base. <laughs> it's like PR as well, often underestimated. You know, those kind of marketing channels are really, really valuable um, in terms of getting businesses going and growing. And you've got that challenge now stepping into that US market. You said earlier that a lot of your kind of branded stuff was, was based on British brands. Is that 
going to continue in the States? Because, you know, a lot, a lot of people in America are quite like a, a, a bit of British yeah. brand. But are you going to evolve it to include kind of US brands, US names, things familiar to people over there? I mean, to be honest, we are thinking about how we're going to approach this. But the things that we will definitely do early on is actually to look at partnerships in the same way that we've done in the UK. Because obviously a lot of people are operating in the UK also have American arms. So that's a very good way for us to get in front of some new kind of American customers. We'll also do PR. So I, in fact, I've got an American company coming to film in this week. So those kind of ways are a good way to us to get our foot in the market, to test it. And then I'm sure we will look at the paid route as well, because we will have to. It, it's an exciting market. You know, I think but average basket size, you know, sizes, for instance, are much higher in the US than they are in the UK. So, you know, they're very good customers. You know, what we're also doing is we're, from a wholesale perspective, we're now actively working with more uh, wholesalers outside the UK as a really good way to get a positioning in, in that market and to understand those markets better. But also once you open up your kind of wholesale opportunities, you know, outside of the UK, it's a huge, you know, obviously it's a limitless market and very exciting. That was Harriet Hastings from Biscuiteers. For more interviews, news and analysis, check out standard.co.uk forward slash business or pick up the Evening Standard newspaper. How to be a CEO is back on Monday morning. We'd love to see you then.